Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the horrible realities of being a general of the Imperial Guard. More specifically, we're going to be talking about General Andreas Karnheide, whose story is, um, I don't think, unique within the hierarchy of the Imperial Guard. Uh, you'll learn more about it later. If you guys have any questions or any other suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below what it is. I'll try to create a video for you. If you guys enjoy our content, subscribe. Uh, we post videos every single day. And of course, uh, support us on Patreon if you would like to. It's just a dollar a month. Link it down in the description below. But with all of that said, let's get into 40 facts on General Andreas Karnheide and the horrible realities of becoming an Imperial Guard General. An Imperial Guard General is a rank within the Imperial Guard who has come up through the rank and file to obtain a position of command within the Guard's strict regimental hierarchy. These true leaders of men and women are not recruited or designated, they are instead created by circumstance. Most Imperial Guard regiments have earned their soldiers' respects due to their heroism on the field of battle. The presence of a beloved regimental leader at the forefront can mean the difference between a unit standing firm or simply collapsing, the troops fighting to emulate him or simply to protect him from the enemy's attention. Given the ubiquity of conflict in the galaxy, it is perhaps inevitable that leaders rise from the teeming masses, individuals seemingly blessed by the emperor or the gods of war, who are able to perform the most valorous of deeds and earn the most incredible victories. These heroes are men and women drawn from the ranks who find themselves standing at the very epicenter of war. On the actions of such individuals, entire battles often turn, and they become beloved figures of everything their regiment and their homeworld holds dear. Such generals earn and receive the abiding respect, even all of those who serve alongside them, but they reject any type of reward they might be offered. Such men and women seek only to serve mankind, and many are driven by a deep-seated need to protect their fellows from the horrors of war, giving sound advice and instructions to their peers. Now there are some generals that lead with bitterness, and they fight only because this is the only way of life they know. These generals are often entirely ignorant or apathetic of the fact that their name is known across entire war zones and spoken of by the Lord Marshals of the entire Imperial campaigns. The names and images of such generals are used in Imperial propaganda, sometimes without their knowledge or consent. Invariably, the persona propagated in this manner is almost entirely false, idealized to such a degree that few could recognize the figure if they had met him in person but it is admiration and respect from the men and women at arms that is the ultimate downfall to most Imperial Guard generals. Because they command multiple units and sometimes even fight alongside multiple regiments, guardsmen see their generals as protectors and defenders. To those above the general, a strong leader is a tool that should be used to sway campaigns, but always in the favor of the high command's agenda. There is danger in the loyalty that an Imperial Guard general can create. Should the persona of these leaders inspire too much respect, it can overshadow the Lord General or even the War Master of a campaign, both of whom have very little battlefield exposure but jealously guard their control of the war. Garnishing that much attention creates jealousy and anger from the high command, and a smart general must always be on the lookout not to overstep their achievements. The terrifying story of General Karnheide is an excellent example of the trouble and damnation a position of general can bring. Without him, the planet of Lubov would have been lost to the forces of chaos, but because of him, the negligence of the High Command was exposed during the Sabbat World Crusade. Andreas Karnheide was a veteran Imperial Guard commander with a prestigious and long military career that predates the start of the Crusade in the Sabbat Worlds. After serving under the War Master Slido during the Kulin Wars, Karnheide had ascended to become one of the War Masters chosen on his High Command at the beginning of hostilities in the Crusade. Prior to the Lubov campaigns, Karnheide's service during the Crusade remained unglamorous, as circumstances often found him commanding deployment garrisons or forces in transit. After the death of Slido, like many of his contemporaries, Karnheide found himself fallen out of favor with the new War Master, Makaroth. With nothing to prove in terms of loyalty and ability, many veteran commanders such as Karnheide found themselves relegated to the chores associated with the Crusade's newly established Second Front. General Karnheide was not selected for the job of liberating Lubov on merit, but rather as a result of circumstance. Lord Militant Saibon tasked the only senior officer he felt he could spare to the campaign, as the Khan group was overstretched and beset by three significant conflicts. 
Though he was given command of a sizable Liberation Army of Imperial Guard units, they were an ad hoc formation comprised of separate units who had never served together operationally. Many of these units had seen significant service on the front for an extensive amount of time, and they desperately needed to be either retired or reconstituted with fresh troops. Saibon more than likely intended for Karnheit's task force to be used as a stopgap measure, intended to keep the enemy busy on the planet until such time as the Lord Militant could eventually claim victory for himself. However, Saibon greatly misunderstood the threat the Crusade's forces faced on this planet, which would eventually prove to be a far greater danger than anyone had ever expected. The world of Lubov was considered a strategic useful location on one of the main jump routes towards the Crusade's front, and was also believed to be a primary source of fuel, munition, and other consumables for the forces of chaos within the Khan group. From the very beginning of the campaign, Karnheid had numerous obstacles arrayed against him, and his poorly supplied group was unlikely to gain victory. However, Karnheid was a genius at understanding how to use the separate parts of his command coherently, and his command allowed them to function at their best. He knew how to play to the strengths of the various organizations under his command and make them an asset, bringing out the best in his troops through respect for their opinions and their initiative, even as the forces of chaos often did the opposite. General Karnheid should have achieved glory and honor in the light of his great imperial victory, but at last it was not to be. Though he would achieve his assigned objective and drive the chaos forces from the planet, ending their threat to the advancement of the Crusade's front across the Sabbat world sector, General Karnheid was accused of wavering and indecision, with his peers casting doubt on his strength of character and even his ability to command, largely as an act of political vengeance orchestrated by Saibon when it became clear that he had badly misjudged the situation on the planet. The Lord Militant Saibon even had the gall to berate Karnheid for allowing elements under his command to do as they will, which of course was the tactical flexibility that allowed Karnheid to claim the victory in the first place. Karnheid was deeply wounded by this criticism. He eventually went on to publish his own accounts of the actions of Lubov and retired from the crusade and imperial military service altogether. Eighteen months later, he committed suicide, dying from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And those were 40 facts on the horrible realities of becoming a general within the Imperial Guard. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it increases the grim darkness of the 40k universe. As you can see, even something as honorable and simple as the hierarchies of the Imperial Guard or the Astra Militarum just in general, um, I hope it shows you that um, there is, there's treachery, there's uh, sorrow, um, and there's just, there's, it's all horrible uh, when you really look at it. Uh, and this isn't something unique, I guess, to the general. Uh, what happened to Karn Hyde could have happened to like a commander, it could have happened to a captain, it could have happened to uh, pretty much anybody on the hierarchy. The important thing to note, though, is that if you are not at the top of the hierarchy of any organization, doesn't really have to be the Astra Militarum, it could be uh, the Space Marines, it could be the, um, the Imperial Navy, uh, you are not really okay, you're not safe, because the power the attention and just like the knowledge that you gain through your service to the emperor to the imperium is going to threaten some other um, position of power and if even if you step away even if you give up um, that control uh, you are still um, bombarded by the horrible realities of what you did uh, and then that comes back um, and, and obviously, like now we can talk about retirement and, and how it is a thing within 40k. It's just that if you are not at the very top of, of the hierarchy, like I was saying, uh, if you are a general who retires to a pleasure world, uh, if you want to learn more about like retirement on a pleasure world, check out our 40 facts on the pleasure world. I'll put a link up above. Um, but if you go there, then you kind of still have to like look over your shoulder every now and then because you don't know who's going to come out um, and, and either like kill you or, or do something to you so that they can bring down your status uh, and then they can then push up their own um, which again is like something that we talked about when we talked about the high lords of terra where they're constantly trying to like kill each other and assassinate each other uh, it's just the grim darkness and, and the, the the horrible realities of uh being an imperial guard anything or sorry not imperial guard but like being an imperial citizen or an imperial anything um it's just not not good for you if you guys have suggestions for any other daily life topics, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, also let me know. If you're interested in learning more about the hierarchy of um, 
uh, of the Imperium, check out our 40 facts on the Imperial Navy. We go through the hierarchy of uh, the Imperial Navy, and it's really interesting because you get to place uh, like what a captain is, what where their position is, what's a frigate, why does it exist, stuff like that. Uh, and then if you're interested in the Astro Militarum, uh, we have a 40 facts on just a bunch of uh, Imperial Guard lore. I'll put a link up above to the playlist. Um, there's just a lot of topics. And then obviously the, the playlist to the daily life and the uh, horrible realities. Um, if you guys want to check that out and, and get a little bit depressed about the 40k universe, which is grim dark. <laughs> uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Any questions, uh, comment down below, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>